there. You may call me Miss Introvert, and here on this channel, we write, we edit, we learn, and we grow. And I am growing right along with you guys, so we're all in the same writing boat. Today, we're making a video on how to develop and write in your characters' voices. If you are having trouble finding your character voice, if it's just not coming out of you the way that you expected, if you feel like you knew this character inside and out, but you're just not able to narrate them as a first-person character, this video is for you. This video is also for writers who have chosen to write their story in first person, third person limited, or if you're just trying to get your dialogue to sound authentic to your character. Speaking of books and characters, my new fantasy novel is coming out soon. So if you want to hear more about that, stay tuned to the end of the video. But let's get started on character voices. Number one, character background. Now, this isn't step one for everyone. If you are a pantser and not a planner, or if you know who your character is in this very moment and you need to get this voice out of your head and onto paper, maybe this is a step you revisit. But if you want to write your book with less confusion and less questions about who they are, this is a good place to start before you write your book. As you're getting to know your character for the first time, they may be a stranger or maybe you think of them as a casual friend. Either way, you barely know anything about them at this point. Maybe they're inspired by someone you know or a fictional character you know, so maybe you know some things about them. But it's time to get to know them more thoroughly because they are a unique person that you created. Imagine you're interviewing them, or you're taking them out for coffee, or there's just been too much time that's passed since you made this character and you're just interrogating them now. What questions should you ask them? If you're blanking on questions, I have a website linked below that has helped me a lot. It's got 150 questions to ask your character as you're getting to know them and it's linked down below. These will be questions to ask your character and yourself as the author. They might range from simple things, what's your favorite color, to what past life event are they most ashamed of? These are really going to help you get to your character's mindset at the beginning of the book and how that mindset is going to change. In other words, we call that a character arc. And you might have a dynamic character who changes at the end inward and outwardly, or you have a static character that stays roughly the same, even though they've just gone through this whole journey. And if you want to answer questions in the rest of your character's perspectives and not just your protagonist, it is a great idea. Do not shy away from that. Especially if you're writing something like third person limited and you have multiple POVs. Your narrator will be sympathizing with the characters and so too will your reader. These questions are going to be what makes your character more human. The more complex, the more human. Number two, practice. When you're comfortable, try writing in the voice of your character. We don't have to start at the first chapter if that's not the vibe right now. We don't have to even begin drafting the book yet. Start small if you need to. Try answering the questions I've linked below in your character's voice rather than your author's voice. How would they answer these questions instead of you answering for them? We did this exercise in one of my grad school classes where we answered as the author slash narrator and as the character, and it really helped us to get into our character's perspective. If you're writing in third person omniscient or third person limited, it's also super helpful to have both the narrator and the author answer these questions. You can even imagine them having a conversation about anything and just have the narrator and the character get to know each other. Because the narrator technically has to know the story of the characters just as much as you do. The narrator is kind of their own character, if you're separating them from the character and yourself as the author. Write a fun little conversation between the two of them, getting to know each other. Does the character trust the narrator with this story? Or is the narrator untrustworthy? Or in other words, an unreliable narrator? Maybe your narrator is the protagonist, but she's from the future, and she's recounting the events of the current main character, who has no idea what's in store for them maybe have the two of them talk. The past self, your main character, talks to her future self. How would they interact if such a thing were possible? If you're writing in first person, this will be especially helpful. It's kind of like method acting. You're trapping yourself in the mind of someone else and you're creating their mindset as you go. And 
if this character goes quiet for a little while, don't be afraid to step back, take a break, do a little research on the time period you've selected, on the character personality you might have selected. Maybe you want to do a personality test on them. Or you can interview someone with a similar personality. If you're inspired by someone you know, talk to them. See what their mannerisms are like. Reflect on how they're talking to you how they talk to other people, maybe how their emotions shift and regulate. Ask them to tell you a story. Try some people watching. Maybe you don't really have a set personality type ready for your character. You just have their arc ready to go. Maybe you have their place in the story ready to go, but that personality is missing. So look at some of the other real people in the world. We're not always going to be able to rely on our creativity. We can't even trust our character's consciousness to be at our beck and call. You have to go find them sometimes. Remember, it doesn't make you a bad creative thinker or writer if you lose your character voice. It's literally just what writers have to deal with. And it's what we have to do. We have to go find our inspiration and go find our creativity. And sometimes we're going to write without it and that's okay. Number three, start drafting. There are so many other exercises that you can learn from other authors, or there's other ways to order your outline. There's so many ways you can do it, and sometimes that's really overwhelming, and we just want to jump right into our character's POV and start writing the book for reals. That's understandable. You've created something. You've created someone. And now you get the pleasure of listening to their voice as you write. Stay in their headspace with all the information you've gathered and all of the development you've made up to this point. Right up until their first appearance in the story where their presence is the most crucial. Think about that moment. And then you're ready to turn a series of questions and observations and inspiration into a real life person. And your readers are gonna be ready to meet them. But it's not going to be as easy as putting yourself into an inspirational movie scene where all of the writing comes together perfectly. It's gonna take time. Ugh. Just as when you were developing your character, this one's gonna get bored. It's gonna leave you for a little while. You're gonna get bored of the character. You're gonna leave them for a little while. You might move on to another story idea. The mind of a writer is very fickle. I know this from experience, but that's okay. Just keep writing when you get back to it. Take the breaks and write again. You got this. And that is just a little bit about writing character voice. This is just my experience, so you can take it or leave it. But I have found lots of help using these methods that I've learned from other writers and professors and just people who know what they're doing creatively. So I hope this was helpful to you too. And I hope that it helps you find your own rhythm, your own groove of writing for yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and comment down below. This is probably going to be cliche, and we want to avoid cliches, but you're probably going to find it in the 150 character questions that I've linked down below. But what is in your character's pocket right now? If you have beta read before, or if you want to try beta reading, I have a Google form down below that you can sign up for and help me edit some of my books. Love you guys to have a first look at it and tell me what you guys think. I have other projects that I'm working on other than this book that's coming out soon, which I will start announcing right now. So this is the title reveal for the book that's coming out later this year, maybe next year. We haven't settled on a release day yet, and that's okay. It it is called Down with Dragon Town, and it is the first installment of the Book of Dorbin. Now, if you've been with me for a long time, you know that I have a book that's called Before Red Fire, A Source of Falls. That was meant to be the first book in the Before Red Fire series. I was going to have a second book and a third book, and they were also going to be equally as long. There is a reason there is now another first book. I am splitting Before It Fire, A Sorcerer Falls in half, and I'm going to be releasing the first version and the second version separately, just to build up some hype for that. Trying out self-publishing marketing, it's an experiment, so if it doesn't work out, we're gonna move on to other projects. If it does, I'm excited for you guys to read it. It is a high fantasy about a dragon shifter named Krista who is teetering on the chance to resurrect the dragons or stay faithful to the mortal world that she has helped cultivate for over 200 years. We've come to the cusp of her decision and she's gonna have the help of a few more comrades, two of which being two other female leads, a knight and a ranger, and there's a lot going on, which is why I split the book in half. I'm not taking my other book off of Amazon. If you want the longer version, get the longer version. But if you need something more digestible, 
get the 250 page one because I understand the limit for reading. I have my limits too. Thank you guys for listening to my little announcement and thank you for watching this video. Again, don't forget to subscribe, like this video and comment down below what you think about my publishing strategy. It's a little, it's a little chaotic, but we're, we're, we're getting it done. I hope to see you guys on this channel and on my TikTok, my Instagram. Stay basic. Okay, bye.